Trigger point activity can affect the functioning of a muscle in three important ways. First, it makes it impossible for the entire muscle to completely relax. Second, it weakens the muscle's overall contractile force. And third, it reduces the muscle's range of motion. The overall effect of these functional distortions is to significantly increase the resting tension of the involved muscle. This type of muscle tension is not mediated by the typical motor control feedback mechanisms of the nervous system and is often overlooked as a source of muscle tension in the medical sciences because of this. Trigger point induced muscle tension is partially a result of the dysfunctional myoneural junction causing a group of the muscle fibers to remain in a constant state of contraction. This sustained contraction causes a local energy crisis as the blood flow to the muscle fibers is squeezed shut for a prolonged period of time. As the local blood circulation is impaired, metabolic waste from the contractile process accumulate, while at the same time, the nutrition and oxygen needed to power the contraction are prevented from reaching the muscle cells. This process creates a vicious cycle that can perpetuate itself over a sustained period of time. Though the local energy crisis is an isolated event within a muscle, the muscle tension that is created represents a significant energetic drain on the body. And although clients may be acutely aware of feeling tired or exhausted, they are rarely aware of a muscle tension that has accumulated over time. Ironically, it is not until its trigger points have been deactivated and the muscle obtains a truly relaxed state that a person becomes completely aware of the muscle tension that they were experiencing. This post-treatment kinesthetic realization can be quite powerful and typically coincides with healthy change in the client's emotional state. Although there is a likely correlation between trigger point activity and the potential for muscle spasm, the traditional pain-spasm-pain pain cycle theory has no relevance to trigger point pathophysiology. True neurological muscle spasm and the pain associated with it has a different mechanism from trigger point induced pain and or spasm. Interestingly enough, trigger point activity is more likely to facilitate spasm in another muscle group than it is likely to induce spasm in the muscle group harboring the trigger point. This phenomenon is known as referred spasm and will be described in more detail in the referred pain section of this course. The local energy crisis described previously not only affects the muscle, but also the nerve supply as well. The metabolic wastes that accumulate in an energy crisis sensitize and modify the function of any sensory and autonomic nerves in the region. This aberrant stimulation to the nervous system is thought to cause many of the symptoms associated with trigger points, including local tenderness, referred pain, referred muscle inhibition and spasm, somatovisceral disturbances, and the local twitch response. Increased muscle tension may also cause a muscle to entrap an adjacent nerve as it passes through the region. Nerve entrapment can produce pain, paresthesia, and or motor impairment, depending on the type of nerve entrapped. A common example of this involves the sciatic nerve and the piriformis muscle. Trigger point activity can have detrimental effects on tendons, joints, and fascia in both the short-term and the long-term time frames. In the short term, the stress that a trigger point imposes on a tendon's attachment can cause what is known as an attachment trigger point. Attachment trigger points typically refer pain in the local region and will spontaneously resolve themselves if the primary trigger point in the muscle is deactivated. Over the long term, muscle tendons under chronic stress become inflamed and eventually calcified at their attachments. This calcification is the body's attempt to strengthen the attachment by adding more bone tissue, causing bone spurs to develop. Like tendons, the joints in the body are also affected by trigger point activity. The muscle tension created by trigger points can alter the mechanics of a joint and reduce its normal range of motion. 
This condition is clinically referred to as an articular dysfunction or a subluxation and is capable of producing referred pain and other symptoms itself. Articular dysfunction can be both a consequence of trigger point activity and a cause of it. It is this interplay between the two disorders that makes chiropractic treatment ineffective at times. If, for example, the articular dysfunction is secondary to trigger point activity in the multifidi group, then releasing the articular restriction will only provide a temporary fix. The synovial tissues that line a joint cavity rely on a regular joint motion to receive nutrition. Muscular trigger point activity can significantly reduce the range of motion of an involved joint, starving the synovial tissues, and causing them to lose their lubricating function. Additionally, long-term trigger point induced muscle tension can cause a distortion in the connective tissue that surrounds and supports the muscles. This connective tissue, called fascia, functions as a soft tissue framework or glue that supports the various tissues and structures of the human body. Fascia adapts to the mechanical tension imposed on it by changing its shape and composition. Over time, functional deficiencies in the muscles and the joints become structurally reinforced and perpetuated by adaptations in the surrounding fascia. Though a person's posture is a composite of many factors, including emotional and psychological influences, the most clinically apparent factors are acute antalgic or pain-avoiding changes related to trigger point activity. Observing a client's antalgic posture and or gait provides useful information in identifying which trigger points are active. Common postural distortions, such as the head forward, rounded shoulder posture, involve neurological patterns of tense muscles juxtaposed with inhibited muscles. These distortions of intermediate duration are mediated through referred motor activity from trigger points and respond well to trigger point therapy and corrective training. More established postural distortions are the result of chronic pathological changes in the muscles, tendons, joints, and fascia. Because posture plays such a fundamental role in the successful treatment of trigger points, we designed a special protocol to correct common postural distortions seen in the clinical practice. <music>